Thank you, and um, thank you to the organisers of this conference, the opportunity to speak today. Um, today, was, this is my um, full-time job, um, but you know we've heard about copper the last few days. Um, what I'm going to present today is a story about a copper project in the South Gobi of Mongolia. Um, this is currently one of the largest undeveloped copper and gold projects globally um, that's not controlled by a major company. So an exciting opportunity that's come about with five or six years of hard exploration in the South Gobi. Um, and we'll um, jump into it and I'll introduce the Hamagtai project. So disclaimer. So what are we, Xanadu? We're a copper and gold exploration company. We have a strong DNA in exploration. Um, we have an even stronger DNA in Mongolia. Much of the team are involved with discoveries such as AU Torgoy in the past. Um, and this project is a project that over the last five years, Hamugtai, we've now put as one of the biggest undeveloped copper and gold projects globally. Um, uh, at the end of last year, we put together a joint compliant resource, one billion tonnes containing over three million tonnes of copper and 8 million ounces of gold. And this is a very small part of what is a very large system and growing. Um, significantly, most of this resource sits in a potential open cut pit. Um, it's a very low strip ratio. It's a very conventional project, um, an exciting project. Um, and we also have a very large portfolio of other projects in Mongolia, um, focus on exploration. But today, I'll focus on our flagship Amagtai project. Um, we're all about discovery. We're all about growth of those discoveries. And definition, we are an exploration company. So we look to take projects through the discovery process, through the definition, build those resources and look to partner with larger mining companies um, as we get into the PFS type stage and the study stage. So in Amagtai, as I said, um, we've got uh, multiple discoveries underway at the moment. 12 months, um, we continue to drill the system. Although we've got this large resource, we continue the exploration in the background. Um, and over the last year, we've just successfully delivered that very large resource that's now positioned Hamagtai as a, as a very, um, very large and one of the significant deposits globally. Um, that project now, we're pushing through into a scoping study that's underway, um, exploring the optimization, the opportunities of this project. Um, significantly, we have a large resource, but we'll step through that. We have a high grade core that allows rapid payback. One of the unique opportunities of this project is that you, know, you have a very large part of the system that is high grade above 0.8% copper equivalent sits at surface. Um, we have established infrastructure, we'll step through that. Um, and we're in a jurisdiction where you can build mines. Um, only 100 kilometres away, uh, Rio Tinto has built one of the largest copper deposits, would be the third largest copper deposit globally now. Um, and that's gone from a discovery, which were the early 2000s, full production in 13, and the underground will now rank it as the third biggest copper deposit. So a team that can do, very much anchored by a Mongolian team. There's myself, the CEO, um, 20 years experience, um, been involved with several greenfields discoveries in the copper and gold space. Matt Brown, our chief geologist, um, Colin Moorhead, long time with Newcrest, um, and a very supportive board um, and, a, and a very good management. So if we look at the company, we're a dual listed AXXTXX listed company, share price at a little under three cents, uh, market capitalization of $34 million, $7 million cash on hand, strong institutional register, board controlling and big bits. So the right ingredients, except for that market capitalization, we need to build that up. So where are we? Mongolia. Mongolia is God's gift to explorers. This is the most sparsely populated country in the world. You're on the doorstep of the biggest consumer in China. Um, but this is really the opportunity to get in and explore this. We've got excellent infrastructure. Um, it's a pro-mining jurisdiction. It's a significant mining restriction. It's a very immature um, belt, um, very little exploration. Um, it's got two of the largest copper deposits globally. If you look at the size of the two Mongolian deposits that are in production today, um, they're only second in terms of size to Chile. Um, so great pedigree. Um, and given our presence and you know, being working in the country, we have a very good ESG position in the country, um, social license to operate that allows us to progress this project quite aggressively. As I said, we'll look at the Magtai project, um, one of the largest um, copper and gold projects globally at the moment, um, and uh, grow, continuing to grow. If we zoom into that South Gobi region, um, it's an amazing, as I said, most sparsely populated country in the world, but we have established infrastructure. It's great to walk onto a project or have a project where you've got very large mines around you. And when you have those large mines, you often get a tsunami of infrastructure that comes with you. So we're not worried. We're not at 5,000 metres. Um, we're about 1,000 metres. We've got water. Um, we now have established rail. Um, we have power. We're very close to some of the large copper smelters in Inner Mongolia in China. Um, so we've got access to you know, these sorts of infrastructure. So when we, when we look at mines globally, um, and mines are, you know, big capex items, but 
when you look at the mines, so, you know, typically a mine we often say is one third infrastructure, one third mill, and one third mining. If you've got that infrastructure and got that in place, it certainly creates um, a very capital intensive or low capital intensive environment to develop things. And that leads to short development times. And as we've all heard, it's all about these discoveries. These projects, they're the companies that are holding and we're going to demand a premium from because there's just not enough of these discoveries around at the moment. And these are your garden variety copper deposits that all your major companies want to own. So, you know, in Mongolia, a very clear and transparent process. This project sits on a fully permitted mining license for 30 years of tenure, an option to extend for 40 years. Um, if we zoom in, we have a look at the project. Um, this is the Magtai project here. It covers a very large area, 40 square kilometres. To date, um, several deposits, Stockwork Hill, White Hill, Copper Hill designed, and a recent discovery in Zara, Golden Eagle and Zephyr. So when we look at this, um, you can walk across these ore bodies, they outcrop at surface. You can hit the rocks at surface. You can see the copper. Um, we've put together over a billion tonnes, so 3 million tonnes of copper, 8 million ounces of gold and growing. Um, but importantly, this includes a high-grade core. Um, and if you look at that area there, um, the magenta and the red, that's what we consider high-grade mineralisation. When you think around the world at the moment, the average grade of open pit copper mines is about 0.3. Um, you know, we've got 0 0.6, 0 0.8 occurring at surface in a very, very large deposit. So if you look at this 100 million tonnes of 0.8, um, this is the opportunity. And it's all about getting you drawing your payback down period in these projects. And we have that opportunity, which is quite unique. As I said, sits on a fully permitted mining licence. Sits at surfaces is going to be a very low strip ratio project. Um, very limited drilling. In fact, some of the best drilling in the last six months is continuing to show the system grows at depth. Um, and continues to increase in grade. Um, and the drilling over the last months, we've continued to get broad intervals, two, three hundred metres at over one and a half, two percent, three percent copper. Um, so these systems are starting to link at depth, um, and we believe that this system will, will ultimately be a, a tier one asset. So we have a look at this in terms of Australian or AXX listed copper companies. It's now the largest copper and gold asset on the AXX. Um, we're trading at a significant discount to our relative peers on the AXX, almost a four times. Um, is that a Mongolian discount? I don't know. I don't believe in that because that's the only place where people are building projects at the moment. Um, and you can see steady resource growth. So since taking this project, it now sits at a billion tonnes. Um, we've defined the high-grade core. We've grown this at over 100 million pounds of copper per month. So very successful with the drill bit. We know what we're doing. We're um, continuing to grow this. But more importantly, um, what's the replacement value of a pound of copper at the moment? We're discovering this copper at less than a cent per pound. So. You know, when you look globally, it's costing us about seven to eight cents to find these deposits. So, you know, good, good exploration, managing your risk, understanding the system is allowing us to deliver copper um, at record low values. So what do you think big companies are going to do? Are they going to go invest, take the risk on, put eight, seven cents in the ground, or are they going to, you know, come along and sort of buy these projects? And that's really what we're aiming for. We're an exploration company. We look to merge with major mining companies to put this into development. So we sit globally, it's okay to be on the AXX. The AXS is quite challenged for copper projects. There isn't a lot of them. Um, but then if we combine this with the TXX and global peers, again, we're one of the largest undeveloped copper projects sitting there at the moment. You can see that trajectory. We sit there with some very large deposits, but a huge out to the north, Red Chris in Canada, which Newcrest are in the process of drilling out at the moment. Um, and that trajectory is taking us. And what we, what we believe, and some of the management here have been involved with this, you know, to book it. But, you know, we're directing towards that to your book. And that's really the aim here, to grow this. Um, and I will say, too, on this, this figure here, um, the management have been involved with the discovery of the ones that are green. So Onto in Indonesia, to your book in Indonesia. Um, we also have um, Namosi in Fiji, Ayu Torgoy in Mongolia, Kadia Ridgeway. So there's a fantastic heritage of being involved in this. And um, they are probably some of the biggest discoveries in the last two decades in the copper space. Um, that many of the members of this team have been involved with. So um, this is a very simple mine, as I said, outcrops at surface, mining is conventional. Um, we have very good recoveries. You're talking sort of high 80s for gold and low 90s for copper. So very conventional. There's nothing tricky about this. Um, conventional open pits been done before. You can stage the development to increase your cash flow. Profes um, processing conventional, metallurgy, simple, straightforward, very good recoveries. Importantly, no arsenic. Um, there's no deterioration elements in this, so ultimately you would produce a very clean, very high demand copper concentrate um, and a lot of credits from gold. If you look at these types of projects, 
um, you know, the largest mining, gold mining companies in the world mine these types of gold projects. That's because you're all in sustaining cost for gold, as you're sort of talking about one or two hundred dollars per, per, per ounce of gold, which is quite remarkable. And our largest gold producer in Australia, Newcrest, um, it, it is basically a copper miner, but the gold credits come for free. So established infrastructure. So we anticipate this is a, you know, quite a conventional, quite straightforward project. And if we can clear it with our peers, um, we look at our peers out there globally. Obviously, OU Torgoy, it's only 100 kilometres away down the road. Same geology, same rocks, same mineral belt, and Katia Ridgeway, a um, bit further away in Australia, but same age rocks. Um, you can see that this, this deposit in Humbugta is very much only constrained um, by the open pit depth. And again, we draw your attention to that high grade material, very low strip ratio. We are extending it at depth. Um, and that's very important because all these deposits have one thing in common. They all start with open pit deposits. OU Torgoy with the OU deposit, Katia Ridgeway, um, Katia Quarry, Katia Hill. You need that open pit material, you need to get into it, you need to start producing. Um, you need that early cash flow. That allows you to bring forward your, your deposits, bring in your caves for the high grade at depth, like we see at Katia, the Ridgeway deposit. Um, and also the great Hugo de Montes for OU Torboy. So what we're generating here is a blueprint for a project that has a 30 plus year mine life, can generate cash flow early um, and bring that payback period down. And that's what makes a successful copper project. So if we look at Xanadu, um, as I said, we're all about discovery. We've been there, done it before, pushed these projects through. And as a group, we've found an enormous amount of copper. Again, we continue to expand this you know, in five years. We've, created 3 million tonnes of copper and 8 million ounces of gold. Um, enormous growth potential in this district and um, it's open in all directions. Um, low technical risk, this is a very conventional mine so we're not talking about anything tricky here. Um, Favourable jurisdiction, um, Mongolia is a stable democracy, it's a mining driven economy. Um, we have a very good ESG footprint in the country. Ambitious exploration company, you know, we, you know, we all mark ourselves on how successful we are at the drill bit. Um, great leadership. Um, we're well funded at the moment to execute on this strategy. Um, and earlier this year, or earlier last year, we put our first sustainability report. So one of the first um, junior companies I've known that's been able to put together a sustainability report, which is on our website, you can check out. Um, so um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we're doing all the right things. So the right projects, right company, right commodities. Um, and thank you for the presentation today.